Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Greater Oshawa Chamber of Commerce virtual fireside chat. My name is Isabel Foley. I'm the Senior Manager of Member Success over at the Oshawa Chamber, and I'm joined today by Chamber CEO Jason King and current Board President Peter Bocking. Uh, we'd like to thank Corporate Training Services from Durham College for their assistance today with the, the technical piece of this chat. Uh, before we get started, a couple of uh, housekeeping points. If you have any questions, please place them in the Q&A uh, section below on the bottom of your screen or in the chat. We'll have a Q&A section uh, later and uh, I'll be asking all of your questions for you. All right, I'd like to introduce today's speakers. I need my glasses for this part. Uh, Jason King is the CEO of the Greater Oshawa Chamber of Commerce. As a longtime resident of Oshawa and self-described super connector, he seeks to engage people in creativity and culture in order to bring strong in-person and digital relationships. Jason's entrepreneurial and high-level marketing background makes him uniquely qualified to develop and promote the Greater Oshawa business community. As CEO, his mission is to position the chamber as an essential partner in business for all members, regardless of the size of their organizations. Peter Bocking is the president of the Chamber of Commerce Board for the year 2022. He's also an entrepreneur who hung his own shingle in 2021 after decades in the insurance business. His firm, Bocking & Grieve, is a boutique insurance brokerage that specializes in helping businesses build comprehensive group benefits and co commercial insurance programs. He has been involved in the Chamber in different capacities for many years and brings lots of great institutional knowledge to the group. All right, let's get to it. Thanks, Izzy. You're welcome. Um, so to start, I guess I'd like to thank everybody for signing on to join us today. Um, we're still a few weeks away, I guess, from being able to get together in person. So um, it's really nice that uh, folks are taking the time out of their busy days to join us here um, and, and kind of get some insight into what we're up to over at the Chamber. Um, I guess, like, how did you want to proceed? Do you want to ask your questions off the list or? Um... Uh, no, I think uh, we'd like to understand your background, how you came about to joining the chamber, sure. what drew you to the role? Okay, yeah, that seems like a reasonable place yeah. to start. So for those of you who I haven't met, um, I, I'm a longtime Oshawa resident and I, in fact, started my first business in Oshawa, if you don't count, you know, kid stuff like paper roots and, and lawn mowing and stuff, but uh, started my first business on Salina Street in 1996. And uh, when this chamber role became available, I was really interested because as an entrepreneur, I always wasn't sure that the chamber world was one for me, you know, as that solo operator, as somebody who's doing that grassrootsy thing. Um, I, I didn't see the connection, right, to what I was doing. And uh, so I saw this opportunity uh, come up and I thought, what a cool way to help engage those folks and, and help them feel less alone when they're starting out in, the, uh, in their business on entre entrepreneurial journey. And what I'm hoping to bring to that is some of the kind of chops around digital marketing, automation, event planning, um, community building, that I've kind of picked up over the years because being that solo entrepreneur back then, I didn't have any of that stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, and the way to build uh, marketing, the way to build connectivity at the time was through events. And that's very much aligned with where the chamber's at. So, you know, fingers crossed, it looks like we're gonna be doing in-person events very shortly in a few weeks. Um, so uh, yeah, it, it's, it's a really exciting time right now to, to be joining and, uh, and serving the community. Thanks. And Peter, what brought you to the Chamber? What attracted you to uh, being involved in the Chamber of Commerce? Uh, I'll, you know what I'll say? It's a loaded question only because I've kind of been around for, for so long and obviously a different capacity than the one I'm in currently. Um, always as a, as, a, as a volunteer, as so many of us are. Um, but, um, you know, the, 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 the opportunities, I guess, uh, that have come out of this in my career, uh, this involvement in the chamber, uh, and I think probably a lot of folks that are tuned in here today would would attest to this as well. The opportunities have been um, phenomenal, and and it's so funny, you know, you move through your business and, and your entrepreneurial journey, as you said, Jason, you know, and 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 sometimes you'll take a pause and 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 do some of those introspective um, 
uh, reviews, I guess, for yourself of where did where did these different opportunities come from? And it's been amazing to me how many of those opportunities have actually come out of my involvement in the chamber. Uh, you know, I think about um, you know the relationships that that I've built, even some many friendships uh, that I hold very personally and near and dear to my heart. Um, you know, part of your band, part of the band. <laughs> even that's right. We've got band members out there from from yeah. chamber relationships as well. Um, you know, and 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 of course, looking at my business specifically and the growth and 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 curves of my career, even a lot of that I, I I attest back to my involvement in the chamber. And it sounds cliche, I know, but I and I've said it many many times. But but the more you put into anything, the more you're going to get out of it. And, you know, that that can translate and manifest itself in a lot of different ways for different people, of course, based on their availability and what what their interests are and what their needs are in their business and everything. But I, I do find, you know, if, if it's as little as, you know, showing up to events like today, um, hopefully more so showing up to in-person events later this year when we're able to start getting into those. And I know we've got some on the calendar already uh, scheduled. But, you know, also some of those volunteer hours as well. I spent probably six or seven years on the ambassadors committee, um, which at the time it's, it's sort of sole um, mandate was to welcome new members, encourage them to get involved, you know, uh, when they showed up to events to make sure they've got a, you know, a hand to hold and, and somebody to, to introduce them around and help them see the value of the membership that they had just decided to invest in. And honestly, there were so many rewarding uh, moments in there and, and, and opportunities, I think, that came out of it, not only for me, but, but, but for the broader membership as well. Um, and so, you know, I would encourage folks, if, if you're not on a committee or on a, on a board, um, you know, to, to consider joining a committee. You know, we've got a, a strong slate of events scheduled for this year, which I'm so excited about, um, you know, and we're going to need people's ideas. We're going to need input from, from so many different folks to to make sure that we've got the best uh, events on the table and um, and and that we can carry them out successfully. So that's a great point. Teamwork makes the dream work, and the bigger the team, <laughs> the bigger the dream. There you go. <laughs> um, so, gentlemen, what do you think the role of a chamber is in today's world? Let me let you start. Sure. Um, I think that we've stated a, a pretty excellent vision for the organization, which is to advocate for people and and that's been really important during COVID. Like, I mean, I've only been in the job since September and some of the advocacy that we've done either on our own at the municipal and regional level, or even, uh, you know, through working with the Ontario Chamber has, I know it's really helped move the needle for a lot of uh, local businesses, not just members. If you look at programs like the COVID rapid testing, we've handed out 40,000 kits and that's really gone a long way to help um, people stay uh, working throughout some of these challenging times so that advocacy piece is the pathway that gives people a voice right into government like it's tough to do it on your own um so that strength in numbers thing i think is uh that's a, a, a important role probably since the chamber was founded in in 28 <laughs> 1928 and i think it'll continue to be um and then the connection piece like peter had alluded to being able to get people together socially or professionally right and just knowing what each other are up to and looking for opportunities to work together going to drop that buzzword in there create synergies build synergies and connectivity and, and i'm dropping it in there because it's absolutely the truth of the matter right is um, there's a lot of people doing amazing stuff in this community and if we don't know about each other it's really hard to work together hmm. right so it's sometimes it's as simple as an introduction uh making that connection happen. Sometimes it's us helping someone with a grand opening, like we have a grand opening in a couple of days. And uh, uh, Street Momo, that that yes. business, brand it's new sad. members. And, and those folks are really busy. They're restaurateurs, they're trying to open during COVID. They need that kind of help, right? And we're helping them connect to the community, to media, to, to other people who can help them get the word out there. And then um, the last thing, like one of our strategic pillars is just information sharing, because I think, uh, again, just hearkening back to my uh, my uh, research of of one person, my own journey, like I found there was a lot of information coming at me from different sources as a as a business operator. How do I know what's relevant to me? How do I know what's helpful and what I can ignore that kind of stuff? So if the chamber can be a filter of that for people, I think that's something really valuable that we can do. You know, you talked about, <clears throat> you talked about synergy. Um, 
Of course, it's a business meeting, so we have to talk about synergy. We, we have yeah. to put it on the whiteboard, of course. Yeah. I know, I get it. <clears throat> but you know, synergy was a hard thing to accomplish even pre-COVID. And although we don't want today's session to be to be, you know, uh, grappling over the last two years necessarily, it, it it is it is very relevant to everybody right now that synergy even pre-COVID was was becoming an increasingly difficult thing to accomplish in the business community. Maybe not, you know, isolated within an individual business. That's a very different piece, but. But but the synergies, the opportunities, the the the, the cross pollination that can happen with you know between organizations, you know I th I think there was an element of isolation that was that was taking place because of technology and the convenience and the the busyness of business, you know, and 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 folks trying to find that work life balance and you know m maybe there's an argument that 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 work life balance has maybe been rediscovered a little bit through the last couple of years with us you know setting up our our offices uh, in our living rooms. Um, but at the same time, I think one of the challenges it's brought to the table is it's even further distance us from those synergies. Um, you know, new businesses are opening up in our in our in our communities, and uh, you know, I guess we're, my business is one of them, and, and you, you mentioned a couple of others as well. You know, un, until until we have the opportunity to sort of bring people together, you know, if it has to be virtually for now, so be it. But you know, it, it takes something like the chamber that 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 is 100% uh, of its focus is on building and maintaining uh, that synergy or, or those opportunities to, to, to create connectivity. And for that reason, I think, you know, going back to your part of your question anyway, uh, Isabella is, you know, a big part of our focus this year needs to be reconnecting our, our, our dots, um, getting our, our, our members, our business community realigned again and, and back in contact with each other. That's where a lot of the events come from and, and trying to create a, a varying degree of events, you know, to, to meet everybody's comfort and interest. We've got hockey games, we've got golf tournaments, there's all kinds of sort of things that are, that are, that are coming up throughout the year that you'll, that you'll hear more about, of course, uh, as the year progresses. But that synergy is a big part of our focus right now. And, and yes, we do a tremendous amount of advocacy um, on behalf of, of, of our members and on the local community and supporting, you know, downtown. I know we'll probably talk a little bit about that today as well. And, and all those things are, are vitally important to the function of the chamber. But, but that synergy and that connectivity, I think, is really key. And whether we've recognized it or not, I think everybody needs to find that again. And if, if there was one positive benefit, I think, to COVID, it's it's that people sort of started to recognize that even simple collaboration can be the foundation of bigger collaboration and and you get this flywheel of momentum and uh, and a lot of really small things have happened that have led to bigger things and I think you're going to see more of that. Uh, yeah, 100% correct. Yeah. yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. Yeah. Um, tell me a little bit about um, how the members figure in the development of your content and your resources? Sure, I mean, we're we're an or, we're a service organization, as you know very well, mm -hmm. right? You were brought in to help us sort of reset our focus around serving the membership. So you're going to see everything be member driven and based on feedback that we get from members. Um, and, and so that's going to inform the content that cr we create, the partnerships that we form. It's going to inform how we decide whether or not to take on different initiatives. And you're seeing, you're seeing some of that already. Um, like we have a big push to do, uh, to do a lot of digital, should we call it modernization of the way the org sort of delivers services and value to people, right? So that they can access stuff that they need easily whenever they need it and um the what of that like what goes in to those uh to those kind of delivery mechanisms is going to be determined by the member needs i've been really surprised probably the most surprising thing that i've learned since i and and, and i may think of something more surprising later but in these conversations that we've had in person with people in the course of handing out these covid test kits it's amazing how many people say i really need help with fundamentals you know and this is just one example of course it's not going to be like our key area of focus but people say you know i'm i'm a great electrician so i got a, I went and got a truck and i put my name on the side and uh and i don't know the rest of the job like i have all of a sudden i have a business and two people report to me right and i i need to know um how to stay up i've had great luck as a startup but how do i stay up and then how do i move along and, and thrive so 
um, we, I think we really look forward to building up, um, you and I have talked about this a lot, yeah. resources, on-demand resources or um, stuff that's in real time like this that people can access that helps them get answers to those questions and localized to our area because um, all of these challenges need to be navigated through that lens as well. I think, um, you know, supporting local has been a big push lately sure. and, and probably our viewers and, 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 you know, many folks are probably seeing that, that pretty consistent message that's come out, um, you know, within the community. And when I say the, I'll, I'll sort of say the broader community, the chambers across Durham region, the chambers and boards of trade across Durham region have all come together and kind of recognized, um, you know, the need for that push and, and the support, you know, of existing members, local small business and everything. And, you know, I think that's just sort of one small example of, of, of what the chamber movement is kind of all about on a broader scale. Um, you know, it, 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 it's a statement that we kind of hear all the time, I guess, you know, shop local, support local, but, but that, that consistent reminder, I think, is, is key. Um, you know, and, and, and who else to sort of push out that message with, with a non-biased uh, perspective um, than, than a chamber that's been around for 95 years. And, and, and I don't know how long the other ones have been around, probably equally as long or close to it, but, but there's such well-established organizations that are sitting right here in the middle of our community, begging and pleading and asking for ideas of how more can we support you, you know, in, in, in terms of whether it's business development or, or advocacy, you know, uh, um, you know, being a stronger voice towards municipal and, 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 and governments of different levels, you know, there, there's another sort of element of, of what's been brought to the table here. Uh, and something else that I'd like to comment on as well, too, is, you know, you're talking about sort of the, the purpose and, and, you know, bringing, bringing value to the membership. Talk about uh, pivoting. Uh, I mean, you know, every business out there has had to figure out how to pivot. There's no question. Yeah. And it's time we did that. It, it's, it's time we did that. And, yeah. I, and I can say in many ways it's been happening. I think... Uh, you know, our, our, our leadership in, in Nancy before Jason joined us, uh, she honestly did an excellent job of, of, of trying to pivot. And, and, and the biggest challenge in your role, Jason, now, uh, and you're also doing a wonderful job of it, but it is listening. It, it has to be listening. But, but in order for us to listen and hear what the membership needs, we need to need them to know how to connect with us and let us know what, what it is that they need. You know, you talked about the 40,000 rapid test kits. That's a, that was a no brainer of a, of an opportunity, make sure that those, and, and poor Isabel here, I mean, you put in <laughs> unbelievable hours to, to kind of make sure that that happened as smoothly as possible and, and, and that everybody had what they needed through all this. But, but, you know, it was that at that time. And, and now our purpose needs to shift. It's time for something different. And, and let's hear from those, those members, you know, I think, uh, you know, I would leave people with this thought on this topic, which is part of what makes this area such a great place to live and work is the opportunity to co-create more excellence, right? Mm -hmm. we, we have such a great platform to do that right now. In some ways, COVID has enabled that, which is a bizarre but really cool side effect because people are just collaborating more. Um, you have greater access to the people who can make the changes. So I, it's just a really exciting time now to be kind of in Chamberland and, and doing this work. So. Yeah. People need to speak up and, and co-create their own future with us. For sure. So the chamber in 2022, what are the top three goals? <laughs> I think we already touched on one of them, which is this kind of idea of um, digital transformation in terms of the way we make it easier to interact with us, um, the way that we do value and service delivery. Right, um, you and I have looked at a whole bunch of different software to kind of simplify th those interactions for people, right? Um, to kind of put it in their pocket at their fingertips, the way that people are used to interacting with any other brand or any other service provider. And so that's uh, a big priority. And th this morning we passed our budget and I think we had enough layers of different things kind of snuck in there that can enable, um, that, that'll enable all the things that we wanna do. Um, this whole idea of doing more with less, we're still going to be able to do that. As you saw um, when we passed the budget, we've uh, we've kind of gotten out of the business of stuff that isn't necessarily chamber work. And we're just focused on our knitting of how do we be valuable to people, right? So that's, that's a key priority. P 
Peter's going to talk about events probably right now as a priority. So <laughs> back to you in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I kind of touched on it already, obviously, yeah. and don't, we don't need to sort of belabor the point, but it is, it is, there is some rich content, I guess is probably <laughs> the way to say it, that'll be coming in the next couple of weeks on the, the Chamber's website, uh, you know, in terms of the event calendar. Um, and I think I mentioned it earlier too, like, you know, trying to appeal to different different groups and different interests, different comfort levels, like even the definition of that has evolved over the last couple of years, right? And so <clears throat> here we are talking about live and exciting in-person events over a Zoom meeting, like it's in, a little bit- In your living room. In my <laughs> living room, yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, the, 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 the future of this year is, I'm so energized by, by what our opportunities are. And yes, we still have to proceed carefully and, and be respectful of, of um, you know, everyone's comfort level in, in those things, right? But um, uh, events is, is, is key. And, and, and it's not just about getting together and, and, and enjoying a drink or a social time together, you know, making sure that it's rich with content uh, that, 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 that is meaningful to the membership and finding those opportunities to reconnect. Even some of our business after fives, like, you know, one of the things, one of the many things the chamber has been great at for so many years is, creating events and and honestly filling them like the sellout mm -hmm. events were were frequent and and uh and uh and often like they were i mean they were often it's, it's the same thing um but they were they, they were happening pretty regularly and mm -hmm. i look forward to 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 redefining what that is and, and getting back to those things um you know i i, I said already that the uh, the calendar is calendar calendar is full and filling up with with more stuff so I think that's probably a, a, one of the priorities, like you said, for this year. And, um, you know, advocacy, I, I, I can't say enough uh, as well. And Jason, you could probably speak a little bit to it. But there are there are a number of different areas of advocacy that require, you know, our attention locally as an Oshawa chamber, um, regionally as, as a group of chambers. We've come together and signed a few letters in support of different things, uh, you know, and, and have passed those on to various levels of government. Um, you know, and th that work is going to continue as well. Um, a lot of things locally here, you know, in, in the Oshawa area and, and, and a, as I said, regionally as well. Um, and even sort of the, the, the micro bursts of even, you know, the subject of downtown. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've, we've circled that subject matter for a long time and, and, and the challenges there have even evolved in the last couple of years. And they so certainly shifted, yeah. They have, right? So as we kind of come out from under our, our, our blankets here after the, uh, the apocalyptic uh, two years that we've all kind of enjoyed <laughs> in our homes, you know, it's kind of the dust is settling a little bit and let's take a look around and see what what what's needed now. You know, downtown has shifted, you know, and and and, you know, there are different challenges. All of them can be overcome. I'm confident of that. But we got to come together. We have a, a the downtown business association. Let's let's communicate, collaborate and work together, you know, and and find our way through those things. So did I, you I, ask for three things? I think so. I did. But I think we have about four or well, so now, <laughs> you know, he, <laughs> Peter sort of introduced probably the third most important yeah. thing, and it's part of how we do advocacy. It's part of how we do all this, which is forming these partnerships with values aligned uh, people and other organizations who want the same things that we do. And we've been having an amazing time um, exploring these partnerships, and, yeah. and there's a lot of good stuff happening with it already localized to the downtown, but certainly beyond with the through the Ontario Chamber, through the Canadian Chamber. Mm -hmm. We just got our recertification. So shout out to Nancy, because that was a lot of work that yes. she did. Um, yeah, that that's another exciting thing is the just the power of many, right? Um, we don't have to feel like a two person gang every single day, because we have these great <laughs> partnerships. That's great. Yeah, those are great points. Um, but I want to talk about right now uh, at the chamber. What is what are the benefits of being a chamber today? We've got all these plans for 2022, but and and Peter, I'm going to uh, point it at you, and then I would like to I would like to speak to you or have you speak to what you've recently launched as well. So, sure, sure. Peter, uh, if you can go ahead and start. Yeah. So so just just value of chamber membership, I guess, is is what you're looking for there. Well, what is one of the, the key benefits? And and I'm talking about uh, you know your your piece of it your company's piece yeah in the chamber yeah and it's I, I guess it's kind of shifting hats a little bit there right mm -hmm. and if i sort of take my my board hat off for a minute and just go back to my 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 business ownership hat i mean of you know no no question i've i've enjoyed being involved in the in the chamber for many many years when i when i um, made some changes in my career early in uh, 20 it was actually the end of 2020 actually but 
um, you know, great joining, timing. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. It's figured, you know, it's kind of bored. No, I'm kidding. Um, but uh, you know, joining the chamber is just a, it, it's, it, it was, it's a no brainer, you know? And so, you know, if I speak to it, I guess a bit more from the value of what do I see out of it as a, as a member of the chamber, I kind of said it earlier already, so I'm sorry to repeat myself, but, but it is truly, you get out of it what you put into it. And that doesn't mean you have to sit in the president's seat, you know, or not even necessarily on the board of the executive, you know, but, but to jump into a committee, and I can speak even to my many years uh, as, as having been a member, um, you know, the opportunity to sit around a table and rub elbows with other business leaders in the community, um, it, it, it pays dividends in so many different ways. Um, you know, just, just to be able to meet, connect, you know, hear ideas, not only within, you know, how do we organize this event or, you know, how do we move this help to support moving a bill forward if it's advocacy or whatever government relations, that sort of thing. But even just the opportunity to sort of chit chat with other business leaders and finding out how they're managing through various challenges within their business. I can't tell you how many times I've gotten, you know, ideas and even processes or procedures to, to, to help manage business or, you know, lead my team, you know, at Bakken and Grieve or, or whatever those things might be. A lot of those things have come out of various conversations with folks that I'm sitting around the table with, you know, discussing content that has nothing to do with it. You know, mm-hmm. we're, we're, we're putting together an event, we're reviewing a budget, whatever it is, but, but that opportunity to sit beside some of these other business leaders and hear about how they're navigating this our HR related issue because of COVID or, um, you know, how they're managing the challenges of growth within their business or, or some other thing, you know, it, there just is so much that you can come out of it that, that I said earlier, you know, the number of things that, that I can point to as things that I'm proud of in my career, if I really stop and think about them, a large number of those things came out of my membership at the chamber. Um, relationships, ideas, policy and procedures, you know, within my organization, whatever they might be, confidence levels even, um, you know, just comfort mixing and mingling with different folks of, of various degrees of success and 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 the the adverse selection of industry um, that's represented by the membership of the chamber is also just a huge, a huge thing for me as well. I just love hearing perspectives from totally different walks of life in terms of the, the kind of work that they do in their business. So I, I, that's probably my membership hat, but I, I, I believe it from the bottom of my heart and I always have. That's great. And speaking of different perspectives, that's a great segue for my question to Jason. We've recently, um, the chamber's recently launched uh, a podcast. Do you want to speak to that a little bit? Sure. Yeah. The idea with the podcast, um, and I just love the medium because it's kind of open-ended in a sense, right? You don't necessarily know where the conversation's going to go. Um, when, when I'm lining people up to be on the podcast and you, uh, you got to be my guinea pig as the first interview, they say, uh, sure. Can you send me a list of questions? And my answer is no, <laughs> I'm not going to send you a list of questions. We're going to have a conversation and we're going to you know, it's kind of going to take us where where it takes us. But the the idea with it um, strate- strategically for us is to introduce some of these folks, but it's not meant to be a commercial. It's meant, meant to be getting to know the people in your community that you work with. It's meant to be knowledge sharing to your point about, well, not everybody gets to be at some of those tables that you're talking about. Um, what if we recorded that and made it available on demand so that if you're driving somewhere for 30 minutes, you can listen to it and you can learn from, you know, our friend Ahmed about how to protect your IT infrastructure, because maybe 18 months ago, you didn't realize that you had IT infrastructure <laughs> or that you needed to protect it, right? <laughs> and uh, so these are like easy ways to tick a lot of the boxes that we're trying to tick. Um, and it's super scalable and simple for us to deliver it. So that's kind of why I love the podcast. Like we. There's advocacy work in there. There's this connection thing, and there's that information sharing. Like it's it's just a cool medium to do all that stuff, and the fact that people can enjoy it from wherever, whenever. Um, that just I, I think hopefully that they feel that is um, valuable. Okay, so can you tell everybody what it's called and where they can find it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? I just jumped right into uh, what its job is, but it's called the Velocity Pod, and they can actually find it on the world's top four most trafficked um, podcast platforms. So we're on Apple Podcasts, we're on um, Google, 
we're on Pandora and we're on Spotify, not necessarily in that order. I think the last two are, are reversed, but uh, we didn't pull our content from Spotify. <laughs> okay. Uh, I just want to uh, let our viewers know that this is your last call for putting questions in the Q&A because we're going to start that portion of the, um, of the oh, chat wow. now. Okay. Okay. Excellent. So uh, we do have a couple questions already. So uh, the first question is, uh, we might have touched on it a little, but what is plan the thing with the socks, right? That's what they want to know. Yeah, the oh, socks. We didn't, we didn't Everybody plan wants this. to know. It, just, it happened on its own, organically, <laughs> if you will. <laughs> Synergy. <laughs> yeah. uh, what is the chamber doing to mitigate the ongoing effects of the pandemic on its members? Uh, you know, I think we've dipped into some of that stuff. Um, members and non-members alike, um, we've taken steps to advocate to different levels of government for supports that have been introduced. Um, and, and that's especially um, for the, the, the folks who are in um, hospitality in the last kind of couple of months. Um, the thing with the COVID kits uh, has been ongoing work and that's to keep people busy. You know, um, it was a great window and you could probably talk to this, I could reverse interview you right now, mm -hmm. the window into how people work and what it takes to keep that work happening, right? daycares, oncologists, yeah. people who have to go into people's homes to deliver their services. So manufacturers, um, uh, you know, stores, yeah. shopkeepers, restauranters, and people with everybody. very specialized needs around it mm -hmm. too. Um, immunocompromised folks who rely on being able to continue working like we all do, right? Right. So members and non members, that's felt like a great, um, a great platform for us to be helpful to people during COVID. Is it, it was the question specific to coming out of COVID? Uh, the question is mitigated ongoing effects of the pandemic. Yeah, yep. I mean, it's tough to predict that as everyone knows, right? I, I don't have to be a politician about it. Like everybody knows that we're, we're subject to whatever happens next, just mm -hmm. like everyone else. But what we're doing to sort of hedge against that is just make sure that all the things that we do, all the ways that we're valuable to members and, and the community we can pivot as simply as possible. Like we can't, I made a joke in the board meeting this morning, we can't pivot our hockey game at the generals to Zoom. That wouldn't be fun, right? <laughs> but a lot of the stuff that's really um, tactically or strategically helpful to people, we're just always gonna have an eye on, like how can we make it on demand? How can we virtualize? How can we make sure that we're still enabling those connections? You know, funny, as we were setting up, um, I had a newer member ask for, you know, I'm working on, I, I can't really say what they're working on, but it's something cool, it's something big, you know, and can you connect me to somebody at this organization? Because I think that there's a fit, I think we could. And, and the answer was yes, like no problem. Ding, 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 just write the intro and uh, the chamber is a platform for doing that stuff and, and COVID or non-COVID, that's always gonna be helpful. Yeah, for sure. I think I think even to, uh, to build on that just a little bit, Jason, um, you know, knowledge is power it's another <laughs> cliche throw it out there but knowledge is power and and in, in the in the face of of um not knowing what else to do you know over the past two years all, all the chambers but but certainly the greater Austria chamber of commerce pivoted to become you know an information highway um you know there are regular weekly i think even still right now um ontario chamber meetings that are taking place where you know, from a provincial level, um, you know, individual managers of, of all the various chambers across Ontario are able to gather as much information as they can in terms of updates and, you know, what what what's happened in the last seven days and, you know, what are the, mm -hmm. you know, changes that are coming and the regulations and all that kind of stuff. And, and, and so to be disseminating that information from a provincial level down to our local restaurants here in, in the downtown core or to our manufacturers within the within the borders of Osho or whatever, like to be able to sort of redistribute that information on a regular basis. I know we're tired of, of emails. I know that we're tired of updates about COVID and all that sort of stuff, but unfortunately it is a reality that we're all having to navigate and, and to be a bit of an information highway for the local business community through that, I think is another, although, although uh, unexciting, uh, but very pivotal and very valuable uh, element of, of, of what the chamber has been doing over the past couple of years to help navigate and that service will continue as you both know that yeah. that will continue for the membership to to make sure that any information we have you have uh, to help manage your business. All right, thank you. Uh, Christine asks, 
Uh, for events, is there a way to ensure that we hire local artists, musicians, performers, since they have been really hard hit by the pandemic? I know there are still a lot of restrictions. There is a, there's a strategic focus and emphasis on that, actually. Um, some of the work that we're doing, as you know, as the two of you know, and now I guess I'm doing a spoiler alert, but some of the future work we're doing in tourism will um, focus on events and with with this idea that um, we have all these super talented people, we have Juno winning performers, we have uh, you know slightly embarrassing dad rock bands, and we have we have we have it all here. Um, uh, I'm guilty of that one, um, and 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 these people are great, and they're of the caliber that we need, you know, to uh, to to make these events really memorable and cool. And part of this recovery that we keep talking about downtown or otherwise is going to begin with us occupying these spaces and coming together to enjoy some of these these cultural opportunities. Great. Um, with the downtown, here's another anonymous question. With the downtown BIA gone, what is the chamber doing to help downtown businesses? Um, so in the absence of the BIA, and a lot of folks know this, um, some, some, some really uh, smart, energized, folks have formed an ad hoc sort of de facto new BIA called uh, the Downtown Oshawa Business Association. And we've been working very closely with them recently um, on, on that sort of focus. I mean, we, we have to give it proportionate levels of energy, but luckily those folks have a lot of energy as well. And that means, um, again, working on some of these events, um, bringing in the right partners to uh, like one of the things we're working on, as you know, is is um, that that ball hockey tournament. Yeah. So um, you know, it's inviting people into the down in, into the downtown. There's a lot of tactical stuff, and that's why you see me kind of jamming up here, trying to explain it all and make it consumable. But if if you look at you know the strategic lever of it all, it's invite people downtown, but give them a reason to be there. Right. I think right now. Um, you know, one thing that we that's within all of our collective span of control is um, how can we attract people to the downtown, right? It's not reasonable to invite them down unless we're giving them something compelling. So that's jointly what we're all working on. You can you can um, start to unwind your efforts if there's if there's too many people or too many organizations trying to accomplish yep. the same things from different angles. And so that strategic alliance of of pulling doba as they're as they're yeah. sort of referring to themselves uh you know uh together with with us and, and and having some some conversations and meetings and and blending you know the energy and the and and the devotion that that, that their group has um to to seeking improvement with our ability to sort of have some history and background and relationships and and um you know styles of you know modes of communication or whatever like putting those two superpowers together i think you know and, and aligning our approach um to work with them is uh is is what's going to sort of get some stuff done that, that needs to get done you know i think it would be incomplete too if we didn't mention that um one of the advocacy things that we're working on jointly with them is the the fact that there are social problems you know so outside of our kind of world of business but those social problems are interacting uh, they're intersecting, I guess, as a, as a way to put it with the business community. So it's like, how can we detangle that in a way that is productive for everyone, that's compassionate, and that just generally um, makes downtown Oshawa a better place? Okay. All right, we have uh, another question, anonymous. Um, what are the benefits of joining the chamber, chamber as a solo entrepreneur or new entrepreneur running a small business. Peter, oh I'm gonna- gosh. Can I start with this one? <laughs> sure. You're not alone. That's that's the key benefit, right? Um, so the, the person that I just wrote the connection for, they're with a, a larger organization trying to connect with another even larger organization. But even down to the level of being that solo entrepreneur, and I know this from years of me search of being that small operator, you can just feel like you can't get stuff done that you need done. Even something as simple as when I started my business, I was probably 50 meters outside of the downtown catchment area. So I wasn't uh, whatever, I, I didn't qualify or whatever for kind of the work of the BIA. And that was frustrating to me because I had stuff I wanted to contribute, you know, I wanted to get involved. 
And this is a great platform for that solo operator to get involved. And if they want changes, if they want to see cool stuff happen, we give you the channels and, and the platform and the resources to some extent even um, to, to make that stuff happen. And also to just help you on your journey because you have questions and chances are we can connect you with someone who's been there before. We have so many amazing willing teachers in this network. Um, I've had uh, literally professors and, and instructors from the college and university contact me and say, this is my field of expertise. I'm really interested in developing some content for your membership. And we have a neighbor at our office because we're in a co-working space who has a platform for delivering on-demand education. So that's something we're looking at is like, that doesn't feel like on the surface, it's not super chambery work, but if it's something that we can do through these partnerships and then make those resources enable um, accessible to these uh, these solo folks, that's a really cool a cool mm -hmm. way to be valuable to people. I think. It's a, I think I think I'm going to add a bit of a different angle to it as well. Um, you know, it, it's a bit of a cyclical relationship. You know, in in the sense that over over my years and my time with the, with the chamber, you know, I've I've obviously got tremendous respect for so many of the people that have sat, you know, in, in, in the president seat and, and, and any of the board members that we're working with certainly today and, and in years gone by, you know, the work, the advocacy work and all the things that we're, we're kind of talking about here today that, that, that we continue to do as a chamber and that have been done over the past decades. The reality is, you know, and this is probably one of those kind of back of the mind questions that I'm just going to sort of come out and say, the reality is whether you're a member of the chamber or not, if you're a business in the Oshawa area, you're going to benefit from the work that the, that the chamber does. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, right? You're going to benefit yeah. from it. And they have been benefiting from it. And so, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm treading a little bit on thin ice here by having said that. But, but, but the reality is, like, the, the, the stronger our financial position is by way of having more members, having folks interested and engaged in, the, in their membership within the chamber, showing up at the events, all the things that we've talked about, the reality is the more of that um, activity and involvement and membership growth that we have as a chamber, the more impactful the work is that we're gonna be able to do. The more uh, influence we're gonna be able to have to make change, uh, to better serve the, the, those businesses within the community. So yes, everybody's gonna benefit from the work that we do. But if, you're, if you've joined something and you're a solopreneur or you're, you know, you're, you're in your business for yourself, you, know, you are contributing your, your your money, sure, your, which isn't really a, a huge commitment, but um, you know, you're contributing your resources, your knowledge, your business, your expertise. Maybe you have a venue we can host one of our events at, which is great, you know, a promotional opportunity for you, and 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 another cool way for us to to deliver on our promise of creating new and interesting and vibrant events and that kind of a thing, right? So. So it is very much a cyclical relationship that yes, you know, in, in a way you need us to accomplish the things that, um, you know, that, that we want to accomplish as a chamber on your behalf and that you want us to accomplish on your behalf. But, you know, we also need you in order to be more effective and better at accomplishing bigger and brighter things for the future. So it's, it, it's I guess there's a, there's a, it's kind of an abstract way to look at it, but that is also in my mind, a way that you are benefiting as a solopreneur joining a, yeah. a chamber you're supporting the organization that's 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 working hard to support you eileen just said uh, i love that this question was asked i'm a new member and eager to get involved and get my business out there eileen awesome yeah <laughs> and we have that's what you want to do eileen and uh, <laughs> we'll put you to work <laughs> we formed a new committee this morning that needs some members it has a chair <laughs> but you need more than a chair so <laughs> uh, your emails we have a question from Laura as well. She uh, asks, as a new member who works for a not-for-profit, I'm interested to know if you interact uniquely with not-for-profits and how large your membership is with not-for-profits. Um, we have a, quite a wedge of the membership pie that's not-for-profits. Mm -hmm. I know because we had a, we've had been having a close look at that lately at the those segments. Um, I'm hoping that with your longer view, you can probably answer this question in more detail. From my perspective as the new person, it seems like um, we do create opportunity for not-for-profits to network um, in ways that are kind of tailored to their need, which tends to lean toward um, the fundraising side, but sometimes advocacy so far, sometimes it's even just, um, it's even just um, sort of 
you know, easing the interactions with the community at large. I'm thinking of a couple of specific ones right now. Um, so I'm hoping that maybe, Peter, with your longer view into this, you could maybe talk to that in more detail. Yeah, I certainly can. I'll um, I'll uh, kind of build on some of what you've said there. Um, you know, historically speaking, and of course, it, it, many things remain to be seen in terms of how we're reinventing what we do. It, it, you know, the way we've always done it isn't necessarily the way forward, of course, but um, but the, the rich content that we that we have had over over a long history, you know, the things that are working well, we certainly want to try to find those opportunities to, to 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 reinstate some of those things, you know, and maybe do it a little differently. But but to answer the, the question, like as it relates to not for profits, number one, it's it's um, uh, to me, it's awareness. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of times these these not for profits just need help spreading their word and 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 letting you know, the, the business community, the individuals within our community know that, that they exist and what help they need, what services they provide, uh, whatever that messaging is, uh, is, is important. And again, you know, I go back to that rubbing elbows, not necessarily at a, at a board level or a committee level, but even just at the events and things like that, um, those opportunities to come together with, with, with people that maybe have or businesses that have the pockets to be able to get behind uh, not-for-profits that they believe in and, and provide support. Um, so that's one of the ways. But, but also, and again, I, I don't want to sort of speak too soon because there is some reinvention to be done on some of these things and, and reconsideration on how we approach them. But speaking to the history piece, I know that there were, you know, kind of any number of events that would take place in the past whereby, you know, we would have um, some influential speakers, influential speakers, pardon me, um, you know, attend our, our events or host our events, so to speak. And, you know, the way we would show appreciation to them as, as a thank you would be actually for us to make a donation on their behalf, you know, to a charity of their choice and that kind of thing. And, and I know that they're, they're, you know, the sort of support members first approach was always top of mind uh, when those opportunities came up. And so, um, you know, as we come back into to, to live events and as we start getting these wheels turning again and, and seeing folks come together in the room for, for, for these various speaker type events, I'm sure that we're going to find some opportunities there again to be able to, to, to pivot some of our attention towards these not-for-profits and find some unique ways to support them through things like, like you know, um, donations and things like that. Um, you know, I think, I think that's a big part of it, but, but really that connectivity of, of introducing the not-for-profit to the for-profit sectors and, and helping them to foster some relationships, I think is probably key. I think like everywhere that I've said business today, uh, maybe it's more appropriate to be clear that we mean members, you know, so when we talk about being a member led organization, it's not just for the success of business, it's, it's to make these connections and enable the, the missions of all of our members. And, and you and I, I keep saying you and I have talked about this a lot lately, do we spend much time together in that little office? <laughs> um, even if it's, it's, we're sort of reimagining how we tailor stuff like sponsorship and ads it's like very important to us to to match um an an advertiser or, or or a sponsor to whatever their goals are that they're trying to achieve within our community and uh looking for new ways to do that so i would say the same for the not-for-profits you know um you've heard a very long answer to that question but the question i, I would answer it with a question like let us know what your goals are right mm -hmm. because that's that's how this organization is being kind of, uh, that's how we're building the plane and flying it at the same time is through that kind of feedback of what people need. That's great. I'll even, I'll even sort of, sorry, just one more thing that I'll add to that as well. And it really just does go back to um, this idea of, of, of let us hear what you need, you know, and, and us sitting here saying, well, a not-for-profit needs fundraising. Sure. But maybe that's not what they're after right now. Maybe yeah. they need exposure. Maybe they need awareness, you know, and there is no reason why a fireside chat conversation like this needs to happen in my living room. Right. It, it, it could very easily be taking place at hearth place. I'll pick on them for a second. Right. Or any of the other. It's that hearth word, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it must be what it is. Yeah. That's gotta be it. But, but, but even, you know, to sort of stop by and do a bit of a highlight spot or, or host one of the podcasts in their location. No, they can't see it, but it allows us that opportunity to highlight them and say, you know, thank you very much, uh, ABC organization for hosting us here today and that kind of thing. Like even just some of those little social awareness pieces, you know, every business needs that exposure and, and not-for-profits are very much the same. So there's all kinds of creative 
ways, big and small, that we can that we can find to support them, and and we're all ears. Great. Uh, we've got uh, time for one last question, and it comes from Kyle. Oh boy. And Kyle wants to know. Kyle goes hard. We know this. Will Jason be joining the Peter Bocking experience? <laughs> That's a, you know what I'm going to throw to you on this one. <laughs> oh, you have gosh. a lot of able-bodied players in that band for sure. We 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 yeah. do, yes, we do, and uh, uh, maybe gosh. as a bench warmer. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. We 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 might need some understudies, Kyle. So uh, if we get Jason on the bench, we, we're gonna we're gonna ask that you come along too. So uh, <laughs> it, we'll get you playing a triangle or something. I'm sure, but uh, tambourine, <laughs> tambourine, the Rambo of the tambo. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Jason's got his own band in his own right. I think if anything, I should be looking for opportunities to sneak in there. This is the great thing about COVID ending. I think I have a gig. <laughs> what is that you... really the last question? Well, now I have one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what are you most excited about for the coming year? I'm going to put it to each of you. Okay. Who's first? You choose. Um, Peter. Okay. What I am most excited about is uh, the improvement of our collective mental health. Um, you know, I think this pandemic has shifted uh, maybe a little bit away, thankfully a little bit away from, from the, the health threats that we've been sort of uh, navigating for the last couple of years. And it has pivoted much more towards our mental health, um, you know, as, as, as a community, as a society, as a globe. And uh, what I'm most excited about is, is seeing us triumphantly overcome that. Uh, and, and the reason that I'm excited about it, there's a lot of reasons, but I think if I have my chamber hat on, my business community hat on, the reason that I'm excited about it is, is the level of um, efficacy that each of our individual businesses have and therefore our community as a whole uh, can have with a positive frame of mind and, and, and a good state of mental health within ourselves as the leaders and amongst our teams within our organizations um, is we've been there before and I can't wait uh, for this year to be the year that we get back to that place and I think that the way that the chamber can help support that is again through knowledge and ed education it's through different platforms and resources, um, things that that uh, members have access to through 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 their their membership within a chamber. There's lots of tools and resources and and um, you know programs that 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 they can uh, gain access to as a result of their membership. Uh, and again, I'm sorry to hit on it again, but it's back to our events. It's it's being able to actually put on our dress shoes and leave the house. All evidence to the contrary today. We're here at my place today. I know, but. But to be able to put on our shoes and go out and and greet people, whether it's a handshake or a fist bump or from a distance, doesn't matter. But to be in a room together and start feeding off of that energy again and remember why uh, we're, we're working in the community that we work within. Um, I cannot tell you, I'm, I feel like I'm hovering off my chair by about two feet, but I, <laughs> I just cannot wait um, to see, even to stand back and watch others participate in that again. Um, I, it's it can't happen fast enough, and I think most of us are in that place, and uh, I just can't wait to see what this community is going to become. Yeah, so my answer is going to be pretty close to that one. I'm going to start by saying, though, tactically, and you know me well enough to know I'm a friggin' nerd about this stuff. I love the stuff that we're implementing for people and how it's going to empower them and help them, you know, to sort of to sort of thrive or, or build more momentum as we come out of all this. But, um, you know, what really made me, what attracted me to this job is the opportunity to just build community and make this feel as exciting to everyone else as it does to me in terms of the opportunity to come out of this stronger. Um, I talked about earlier how it's, you know, the, the dark, the darkness of COVID has kind of opened up channels for collaboration that I think probably wouldn't have existed before, or maybe we would have been hustling too hard to notice them. And the stuff that I know is 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 happening as a result of that uh, uh, that uh, openness that's that's happening. I, I just know that um, together we're going to be creating something totally incredible and. Uh, 
And uh, it's funny, <laughs> just made me think of Oshawa's slogan, prepare to be amazed, but like, oh, <laughs> I'm cringing, but that's really how I feel right now. Because I think that, um, you know, there's a lot of really exciting stuff in the in the works and, and we have all the right people to make it happen. So it's just, it's an exciting time to be doing this, you know, collectively. I'm, I'm looking into the camera, like all of us together. That's great. Uh, so we're we're coming towards the end of our fireside chat. I just wanted to know if you guys had any final thoughts before we close things off. Oh, I'm I'm done. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. I I will uh, I I will say thank you. Um, yeah. Honestly, on, on behalf of all of us. Of course, oh, you're cheating. But... I wanted to get to thank you, but yeah. <laughs> Is that a cheat? That might be a cheat. <laughs> Uh, I'll, I'll say thank you for uh, for just your time today and for uh, you know making a, a paper bag lunch and joining us from afar. Um, and and I'll thank you all in advance as well. Those that are uh, attending here live and 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 as well as any of those that watch after the fact, because I believe this has been recorded as well. But just a thank you for for your participation and your interest uh, to learn more about the chamber. Thanks for the questions and everything, and 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 um, thank you in advance for uh, for the opportunity to connect with you uh, live and in person. Uh, later this year and i look forward to serving as as your board president this year and it's it's uh it's going to be an effort of our entire board our entire executive and of course the phenomenal team here so my thank you also extends to the two of you for the great work you've already done in your in your positions and the great work that i know is is in the works and yet to come so thanks yeah thank you to everybody and i guess a little call to action to just get involved and it can be as we all know from recent years, it can be something as simple as just getting involved via social media and helping share some of the messages that we're publishing. You know, um, you never know what discovery of these resources is going to look like to someone else. So when you help us to share this stuff out and amplify our message, your community building, like, you know, from your phone, while you're standing waiting in line or something like that, like it's really easy to get involved. And this is an opportunity for you to get involved in whatever capacity with whatever amount of time and energy um, that you have to dedicate. But um, it's an exciting time to be co-creating a better area to work and live. So please do get involved in whatever capacity is comfortable for you right now. And then um, my thank yous, like thank you to both of you. Thank you to Sarah, who uh, nobody's going to see today, but she she put all this together to a big extent, brought it right to the point where we uh, were able to involve Derek, who none of you are going to see, but he has this amazing TV studio set up in Peter's living room that he just popped out of the trunk of his car. So yeah, it takes a village and we have a really cool village. Um, and I appreciate that. So thank you all. All right. Well, um, I want to say thank you to everybody who tuned in to join us for this fireside chat. Uh, we appreciate your time. We hope that the presentation was interesting and informative for you. Uh, like Jason said, we're waiting to hear from you what you need, what the Chamber can do for you. So you can get in touch with us at oshawachamber.com slash connect. And uh, we'll be able to, uh, to talk to one another and find out how we can help you best. Uh, you can also follow us on social media at Oshawa Chamber on all the, on all the platforms. Please tune into the Velocity Pod. It's amazing. I've listened to all of it, and I'm not a podcast person, but it is really good. Uh, we're going to have more events like this one coming up in the next few months, so you can keep an eye on our website, our events calendar. And finally, I want to thank um, the corporate training services of Durham College uh, for your expertise here, putting all of this together with the technology. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. Enjoy your afternoon. Thank you. Bye. See you soon.